Hello and welcome to Bookish Avec Moi. So I'm back with this video. Basically this is where I'll be talking about my um, reading week. Except in this video it will be about a few reading weeks because I have not done this uh, Bookish Avec Moi videos for uh, quite a few weeks now. So I have plenty to talk about especially in terms of books that I have finished. Although I will be um, talking about them fairly quickly because uh, for some of those books I will be talking about them more in perhaps individual single book review kind of videos. And I will also have a um, May 2021 wrap-up video which will also feature I think one of those books that I finished um, in this kind of like catch-up recap review sort of uh, uh, sort of uh, section in this video. So um, I think I must say that I have been having some pretty exciting reading weeks although a few weeks prior to that um, my reading week has been somewhat a little bit slow because of some external issues uh, which kind of disrupted my reading but Overall, everything is good, everything is fine, and now I'm back with my reading mojo. <laughs> so yeah, let's uh, let's start with the books that I have finished these past uh, few weeks. I'm really excited to talk about these books because some of these are really awesome books. There are also some books that I didn't find exactly awesome, but I'm still kind of keen to talk about these. So the first one that I finished, so this one was actually something I finished in May 2021. This is not a version by Nuril Basri. So this one was originally written in Indonesian. It was translated to the English by John Hesh McGlynn. It was a buddy read with Sean uh, of Sean the Book Maniac. So this one, uh, I would actually talk more about it in my May 2021 uh, wrap up which will come out soon hopefully and uh, I think I might have a single book rambly video about this one as well so I'm not gonna talk more about this one in this uh, in this video but basically uh, just very roughly about this book so this is kind of a about a group of teenagers in the Indonesia and their adventures in discovering kind of like the um, hidden worlds of the LGBTQ community in uh, Jakarta and it, uh, in its neighboring uh, locales. So I think this book, um, it is a very compulsive read. I actually read this book fairly quickly. Um, it was so enjoyable. Basically, the, the chapters, each chapter are quite short and it feels very fast. The pacing in this book is quite fast and you keep seeing new developments in the plot. It, uh, in each chapter, it's just so exciting. And you get to see uh, different kinds of issues being raised, especially when it comes to the socio-economical situations and also issues related to LGBTQ community in uh, Indonesia being highlighted in this novel. Um, I'll talk more about this book in my uh, monthly wrap-up, May wrap-up. And uh, so yeah, suffice to say, um, I found this book to be really awesome. I enjoyed it thoroughly. So the next book that I finished was uh, actually a book that I took uh, a few months to finish because it is such a big one. This is Wally Lamb's I Know This Much Is True. So this story actually takes place in the US and uh, the main plot, actually this story has kind of like two um, narratives that are very very much connected to one another. So the main plot is about uh, this uh, these two brothers, twin brothers actually, identical brothers. So the main character is one of the brothers, his name is Dominic, and Dominic is struggling to take care of his twin brother named Thomas who is suffering from paranoid schizophrenia. And uh, at the same time we also learn that um, Dominic himself is in fact struggling with issues of his own but um, you know, issues that uh, arise from his childhood and everything that has happened to him related to his family, his relationship, his uh, his friends. So Dominic 
as a character turns out to be somewhat of a very flawed character as well, but he is kind of struggling to deal with this. Uh, mainly due to the fact that he feels that he has to put more of his focus in caring for his uh, twin brother who is dealing with mental health issues. This book revolves very heavily around mental health, so I think, um, you know, I think that it talks about mental health in such a sympathetic way, and uh, in it, in its very honest. I, I like the way that it's very honest. It doesn't try to sugarcoat uh, the mental health issues in here and I just really love that so much. This book is also a domestic fiction obviously on how you know um, on how it actually kind of highlights the different things the the different events that happens in Dominic's and Thomas's family life that kind of leads to um, who they are as a person in this uh, in this novel. So that's the main uh, main plot in this book. There is also second uh, kind of like a secondary plot and that actually concerns Thomas and Dominic's grandfather who is actually from uh, it Italy and he came to the US in the early 20th century basically as an immigrant, a poor immigrant and when he arrives arrived in the US, he kind of built his life from the ground up. Um, and this part is kind of interesting because while uh, the connection does not seem to be very clear at the start, um, we kind of learn that there are so many parallels between this grandfather and the lives of Dominic and Thomas. So basically this grandfather, one of his most interesting uh, feature, uh, personality feature, is that he has this super grandiose idea of himself. He's just a big mean person. He's, a, he's pretty much a douchebag in this novel. But uh, that part is also kind of interesting because it reveals uh, some elements in the past that would pretty much give some clues to certain questions that Dominic and Thomas has regarding their family, their their heritage and all that. So I'm not going to spoil so much, but uh, yeah, I really love how those two uh, plot lines just kind of connect with one another and just pretty much the whole catharsis that you get once you finish this book. I mean, this book itself is already quite big, so finishing it already gives me a sense of catharsis. <laughs> but I think that the plotline also provides this sense of really lovely sense of catharsis and closure. And overall, it's just a, I think it's just a really, really good domestic fiction. So the next few books that I have finished were actually smaller books and that kind of explains how I was able to finish many books uh, during that period of time. Uh, the book that I finished after that is Silk by, um, I forgot the name, Alessandro Barico. So this book was or originally written in Italian and it was translated to the English by Anne Goldstein. So um, this book is very short and if you look inside it you'll see that the spacing is like really large as well and the the margins are like super big, super wide. So it makes sense that I would finish this book in, well, not one sitting, but two sittings. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's very fast for a sluggish reader. <laughs> anyway, this book. So this book is about uh, a French tradesman. Uh, he is actually uh, someone who deals with, uh, you know, the silk business. So he, he trades silk. And this story takes place in the 19th century. And uh, one day, um, he kind of has this opportunity to travel to Japan in order to get some good, high-quality silkworms so that he could kind of, you know, get this awesome, great quality silk for him to trade. But uh, the issue at that time, of course, some of us no, would probably know about this is that uh, Japan kind of has this uh, policy on uh, foreigners at the time. Basically, they just kind of 
close their border and they don't really um they are not really cool with people bringing out trade secrets or uh, taking out things that are um, kind of lucrative in Japan at that time out of the country and doing so would be kind of breaking the law and they would be punished very uh, uh, heavily. So essentially what this trades, uh, trades person does, his name is Erve, he goes to Japan and he, and he intends to smuggle up the uh, the silkworms. Um, when he visits Japan, he meets with this woman. Basically, they don't really talk to one another, but uh, he sees this woman and he is smitten. And so after returning from Japan, he returns to his wife. He He is so obsessed with this woman that... He kind of returns to Japan again with the um, with the excuse, of course, it's a valid excuse with the excuse of getting more silkworm. But he just wants to see this woman again, and uh, there is a twist that happened at the end of this book, which I think is kind of interesting. But overall, um, this book just did not impress me very much because this book is kind of written in this fable slash fairy tale um, writing style which I think works with certain narrative but it doesn't seem to work with this one because that kind of writing style puts so much focus on the main character so in this case it puts very, a lot of focus on Elvi and how he is so obsessed with this woman and while I think that in itself is not a big issue I just find that um, it kind of takes a lot from this story, it takes out a lot from this story and all the side characters they don't exactly have much voice and we kind of end up with a story that has this um, has this like really almost offensive new age vibe to it and how it is supposed to relay some kind of message in terms of uh, you know love and relationship and stuff like that and I just think that the main character Elve in this book is someone that I want to slap because he's he's a big moron <laughs> so yeah this book was not good to me I think the only thing that I liked about this book was the twist but even so that twist kind of reveals something more even more problematic about this book regarding how it treats the the side character so yeah uh this book is not my favorite <laughs> the next one i finished is also a very small book also something i finished in two sittings so this one is by vivek shanpak this is gacha gocha so i actually have already uh, a main uh, a single book review video on this uh, on this book so if you want to check that out I'll have the link in the description below uh, so this one was originally written in Canada uh, and it was translated by Srinath Perul to the English so this is a very lovely I'm not sure if lovely is the right, uh, is the right word but uh, yeah it's a nice domestic fiction it has this really strong dark psychological vibe to it so basically what happens in this book is how this family in india um they actually starts out as this kind of poor family and in the family we have the father the mother um, the narrator um, and we also have the narrator's sister and the uncle living together and this is a very close family they all love each other everything is all sunshine in the beginning it was nice except that they are poor and then one day the father loses his job and the uncle just kind of decides to start a business of selling spices and after they begin this business this spice business they become rich and the family become wealthy and a bit of their personality just kind of change um, so yeah that's kind of like the intriguing part of this book not gonna talk more about that but this is kind of like a rags to riches book with a sort of a dark twist to it uh, almost like a black comedy kind of twist um, in how the family operates as a family unit 
you know. And it's a wonderful exploration on how family can kind of change their dynamics and certain elements of those dynamics actually uh, remain the same. So it's a very nuanced take on a family relationship when affected by uh, an external thing. I just really love how this book kind of moves on with the plot. It's a really, really nice domestic novel. And uh, yeah, there is that ending. Oh my gosh, I think that that ending is just... it. It is, you know, it is powerful. I think that the, that ending is really powerful. So, you know, you just got to read this one. It's very short, actually. But, oh my god, I just I just love this one so much. So, moving on, the next book that I finished was A Funny Boy by Sham Selvadurai. So, this book uh, is actually a coming-of-age novel about a, uh, a gay kid who grew up in uh in Sri Lanka and during the time while he uh when he was growing up um there was also this tension between the Tamils and the Sinhalese community uh which was kind of brewing and kind and then afterwards just kind of erupt into this full bloody violent uh riots that you know that happens in the 80s in Sri Lanka but the main focus in this book is how this boy his name is RG how he kind of receives um, over time while he's growing up after witnessing different things that happen to his friends and family how he kind of receives this um, political and also sexual awakening uh, especially on how things operate around him being a gay boy in a in a rather conservative uh, and also somewhat prone to violent uh, environment uh, at the time so I for me I think that this book is just um, it's really touching I really love the coming of age element how different episodes in RG's life just kind of introduces him to different sorts of things that he rediscover about what life is and um, you know the harsh truth that he has to deal with while he's growing up you know things like how LGBTQ people are just simply not accepted simply like that um, how love may not be necessary may not be the only thing that uh, you know would make things work you know we all uh, we all tend to hear like you know stuff like the power of love but it might not be sufficient in a society that uh, puts so much importance on class and ethnicity and race and all the other kinds of things that he just realizes that you know maybe things are not so cheery at all but I think that is kind of like the main selling point of this book. It's it's kind of how this uh, this this teenager who starts out as a young kid in this book just kind of grow up from that and realizes that well things are not as good as it is, but you know shit happens. But yeah, you just gotta go through with it. So I think. This is a very powerful book. I really love it. It's just so much fun to read about the character's journey in here. So yeah, really, really awesome. And lastly, the book that I finished uh, was Heartburn by Nora Ephron. So compared to some of the other books that I read before, this book has a significantly different tone. So this book is about this woman uh, whose name is Rachel. Uh, she's, I think she's living in New York and this story takes place sometime in the 80s. So what happens is that, uh, I think it was 80s or 70s. So what happens in this book is that Rachel, he, uh, she discovers that her, um, his husband, What's up with me and pronouns? <laughs> she discovers that her husband is cheating on another woman uh, whom she finds much more attractive than her. And she kind of uh, has this um, moment where she's feeling sad and angry and insecure and things just kind of falling apart from her, um, around her. And so 
everything just feels kind of shitty to her in this book and she's just kind of trying to figure out how to deal with all sorts of that emotion and at the same time she's just kind of have to decide whether she wants to continue with the relationship you know just kind of move on from it or forget it and stay with the husband and all sorts of dilemma that she has in here I think that this book is kind of you know it, it would have been something that I really love because it it actually reads so much like Fear of Flying, which is another another book that I really like, written by Erica Jong. But I feel that this book is a little bit confused in terms of its tone. Um, it wants to be comedic in a self-deprecating way, which is which is a good way to be comedic. I think I really love that kind of. Uh, I really love that kind of uh, comedy, that kind of humor. At the same time, it is also trying to highlight the sadness and uh, the heartfelt moments that she feel, the vulnerability of a of a person being cheated on. But somehow, on both sides of those, you know, uh, on both kinds of tones, this book, I think, it does not really go enough. Uh, into those those aspects like they just feel mediocre on both ends so I end up not feeling very much from this book it's just it's just super lukewarm and fortunately it was really short so I was able to kind of finish it but I did not get a lot from this one I did not feel moved by this one and yeah overall it was just kind of meh for me so yeah, those are those are the books that I have finished these past few weeks. So now moving on to books that I'm currently reading. But before that, I am just going to share that I am setting aside this book for a while now. This is A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. Um, yeah, I don't think that this is a proper time for me to enjoy this book because I just can't seem to enjoy this book very much right now. I think it has a really nice premise I, and really nice idea, but I don't think I want to continue with this one at this point. So I might pick it up again uh, sometime later, hopefully. So yeah, now moving on to the books that I am currently reading. I am currently reading a few books, so just kind of go through them really quickly. The first one that I'm reading is Redemption in Indigo by Karen Lord. So this one is, uh, I think this story takes place in Barbados in a small uh, village named Makenda. And we have this main character, her name is Palma, so she is leaving her husband who is this really big dumb glutton who keeps on embarrassing himself and uh, her family and uh, Palma is essentially this kind of like all around good goody two shoes kind of a character and one day there is this uh, kind of like a mischievous spirit who brings Palma a particular stick called chaos stick that will give her some sort of magical power now that stick actually belongs to a uh, to an entity a supernatural entity named the zombie uh, a particularly powerful one and i'm not sure what it's what the name is but that powerful supernatural entity really wants to have that stick back and that entity is not particularly a good guy so i'm not sure how the story will advance but so far i think it's kind of kind of okay. <laughs> I think that the plot kind of drags on in certain parts, but it's, I wouldn't say it's something bad. So I'm just going to continue reading this book and see how the plot unfolds. The next one that I'm currently reading is so good. <laughs> this one is Elif Shafa, 10 minutes, 38 seconds in this strange world. I just find this one up unput downable <laughs> really awesome then again i really love her writings as well but this one just pretty much uh this is her newest book so and i feel that this one kind of combines many of the good parts of her previous books this one feels the most political i'm not going to talk more about that because uh, i've not finished it uh, but essentially what happens in this book is that a prostitute 
uh, was found murdered in Istanbul. And the main character is actually the dead prostitute. And in the first part of this book, we learn about what happens in the uh, childhood of this uh, prostitute named Layla. So um, Layla pretty much narrates her no, I think it's the third person narrator. So we see, so we see the third person narrator um, narrates Layla's life in the first part of this book, and we see how she kind of becomes the way that she is right now, and what kind of a person she is back in her childhood and um, in her present also. And we also learn that Layla, uh, she actually befriends uh, five other people who are all kind of like outsiders as well. And it is these five outsiders who are kind of going to be the main star in the second part of the book where uh, they're just kind of trying to do right by Layla who is, who is, uh, who is murdered and her corpse is just kind of left there abandoned by the family and being Layla's friends they just kind of want to um, have a nice funeral for Layla. So uh, I've not really read uh, the second part of the book and I'm really intrigued to find out how that will unfold as well. So I'm really excited actually because yesterday I read this book and I read like more than 100 pages. That rarely happens. So yeah. <laughs> The next one that I'm currently reading, and this one is also quite interesting because I feel that this is kind of like one of those rare moments I am actually hate reading a book. So uh, this one is Sponti by Charlene Teo. So when I first started this book, I, I was unimpressed. Um, really, I thought that the book was kind of mediocre and it has plenty of cliches just literally every paragraph is just kind of like cliches everywhere and uh, this book is about three women generally in Singapore so we have three characters the first one is Sue and Sue is a uh, we see Sue as a an adult woman and also teenage woman in this book uh, so Sue is the daughter of uh, one woman named Amisa so Amisa is actually she used to work as an actress in the 70s where she stars in a series of um, uh, cult movie uh, cult hit movie called Ponti where uh, she acts as this uh, ghost character the the Pontianak character which is where the title comes from and uh, she was kind of a minor uh, minor star at the time but then her her career just kind of faded and in the present time Amisa just kind of works as a spiritual medium where she would conduct seances that may or may not be ripping off other people. So uh, that's the second character. And the third character is named Cersei. So Cersei comes from a richer family. And when Cersei was a secondary school student, she's kind of the same age as Sue. And so Cersei befriends Sue and they kind of has this odd friendship. And something just kind of happens around that time. We're, we're not sure what really happens. It will probably be revealed at the end. But when Cersei is an adult at her workplace, uh, she basically works in the uh, advertising and promotion agency. Uh, she kind of receives this uh, assignment where she has to work with a project, uh, a revival project of the uh, of the. Ponty movies that Amisa used to act in in the 70s. So because of this assignment, uh, all the memories about Sue and Amisa just kind of comes to her and she kind of has this sort of a uh, memory rewind moments, I suppose. So that's what this book is about. But in general, I just think that this book is Again, filled with cliches, but one thing that I find really grating is all three characters sound the same, and all of them are just really bitter and really mean to people, and I find that very insufferable. I, <laughs> I just don't like 
reading it but for some reason I'm somewhat intrigued by that so yeah maybe I guess that's why I end up hate reading this book I don't really like what I'm seeing but at the same time I am weirdly intrigued <laughs> So very quickly for the rest of the books that I am currently reading, these are book the books that I'm not exactly actively engaging in this past week, but still I consider them as something that I'm currently reading. Uh, I am currently reading Justine by Maki de Sade, so so far reading into this book I've encountered plenty horrible characters, which you know it can be somewhat stressful. <laughs> I am also reading Jim Cray's Quarantine, so this one was actually a book that I intended to read for maybe Midrash in May, but I'm still reading this book. I'm reading it slowly, so yeah, digesting it slowly. I am also reading this one by Sarah Waters, so this is Tipping the Velvet, which I think is going to be a book about a lesbian relationship. And also I'm reading this one by Wu Mingyi. This one is called The Man with the Compound Eyes, originally written in Chinese, translated into the English by Daryl Sturck. So this one, uh, it kind of has two characters. One is a native of a fictional community, I think, fictional indigenous tribe community, uh, who, you know, and the main character just kind of gets sacrificed to the sea and he discovers a garbage patch. And another, another Plotline concerns a a woman who lives in the urban area who just lost her child and her husband and she's contemplating suicide. So still, I'm kind of interested to see how those two things converge. I still have not reached that part yet. You know, there's they are still kind of separate in their own world. So I don't know what's gonna happen. So that's it for all of the books that I have finished. That. I am currently reading so it has been wonderful so far especially yesterday that I've had you know that I've read many many pages and uh, yeah hopefully I you know hopefully you'll have a you have a wonderful wonderful reading week as well so um, that's it for Bookish Avec Moi this time uh, I'll see you again in a different video uh, hopefully I'll have more videos coming up soon Again, who knows what will happen, but yeah, I have some plans. I feel somewhat excited right now. I don't know why, but yeah, these things just kind of happen once in a while. So yeah, that's it. I'll see you again in a different video. So take care. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.